this video, I hope to clearly present a method for using foam plates to create scatter water terrain that looks quite good based on my recent experiments. Use a pair of scissors to cut out different circular, more natural shapes. After doing the initial cuts, go back over it to make the cuts not have any jagged edges or uncomfortable portions. Remember to make various sizes. Some should be quite small to represent smaller puddles. Remember that on the grid scale for things like D&D and Pathfinder, one inch is five foot, which is actually quite large. Some of these are larger ponds, therefore in this scale, while others represent smaller puddles or pools. You can make lots of different shapes. I'm going to use the reverse side of these spots for something other than water in the future. But in this video, I only really had time to do the one side and show you how to do the water terrain. Moving forward, we make sure all the edges are cleaned up and we make sure we have enough different circular shapes and different types to get a variety of different water in for this example. I saved and am using the empty containers from various miniatures in order to use them for paint. As I do lots of different art, I have a collection of acrylic paint over the years. You may have more or less, or want to go after certain colors. I'm mostly using thalo blue based different shades of blue in different brands and colors, as well as some versions that have a little bit of green, an olive green, an aqua green. This is a spritz bottle. I got them at the dollar store. They're very good for helping to keep the paints moist. This is a very large makeup brush I also got at the dollar store. It's really useful for this kind of terrain building and I'm glad I bought it. Make sure to wring out most of the water after wetting the brush. You don't want to do this technique with a completely dry brush, but you don't want it to be so wet that it's dripping water everywhere and will make the paint runny. You can dab excess water on a paper towel. Dabbing in multiple colors of paint that are similar to each other, darker, a medium dark, and a mid-tone, for example, and doing different motions, swirling the brush around, tapping the brush around. That's also why I advise wearing gloves. This way, when the paint goes over the edges and off the sides, you won't be getting it on your hands directly. It depends on your situation if you'd rather just wash your hands, but it's usually better not to get paint directly on your hands if you can avoid it. You can use different color combinations and different techniques to get different effects on the different water. This one adds in a bit of a turquoise and a bit of the aqua green, which gives a different color to the pond water and makes it look more tropical or maybe looks a little more shallow or like there's more plants growing in it. You have many options for trying these sort of techniques. The brush gets a bit rough on the tips, which I find extremely helpful for making wave-like effects but by pushing it down and swirling, I can get more of a smooth blend on the surface. I find this makeup brush I found at the store extremely useful for techniques. It's also very quick for doing larger areas and for painting in small ones. It should also be noted that this is the first coat on these water layers. I needed to do two coats whenever I do this, and I advise you consider planning it in layers and doing two coats as well. I continue working on getting all of them done. I twist and tap, sometimes pushing down and smudging, sometimes being very light, and that way the paint applies differently. By putting multiple colors on the brush and moving it around, you can get multiple colors on the same piece. It'll look like rippled wave texture and will make the water look more realistic and more like there are waves pushing along the surface of the water. As you can see, I'm tapping and twisting the brush here to get the effect. Carefully go over every single piece until you can see no white gaps from the foam below. Make sure you've completely covered the white foam on the side you're working on and that you like the way that it looks. Remember we are doing a second coat so it's okay if it's not absolutely perfect. Focus on getting the entire surface covered and getting the general look to be decent. As for me, I advise getting some sort of YouTube video or some show playing in the background while you do this process. That way you don't get bored and you can stay focused. 
but make sure it's something that doesn't require your absolute rapt attention to stare at the screen so you can focus enough on what you're doing with the paint that it's not distracting, but it depends on how you like to work. I personally don't like working in silence most of the time. Here they've all dried. Because the paint has a certain level of translucency, it requires a second coat to go over everything. However, you don't need to be quite as thorough with the paint, so I'm not taking out quite as much this time when I'm going over everything. You can be a little less severe in covering everything, but you do need to put a second coat. As always, I advise using a little spritz spray bottle to keep the paint moistened for longer. If you're taking a while to do this, spritz spray them, especially if you need to go to the bathroom or do something else. Once acrylic paint is dry, it can't be used again, so try to use up all the paint. Filling in the depth of the tone with more of a smudged out base coat first. Then go back in and get in some of the details. Turning and tapping with the brush to get highlights and lowlights in. Tapping around with, for example, this pale aqua green makes it look like ripples in the water. I'm not using any white here to represent the ripples or waves because I find white to be too harsh. But this light greenish color is really good for the tropical water and algae filled pond look. I'm also using the cerulean blue for more of the highlights in some of the other water rather than any harsh white. As there's going to be a false water top coat later, you'll see why I definitely didn't want too harsh of a white effect. In some of these, I'm focusing more on the thalo blue based paints and in others, I'm working more with a greenish tone. This makes the different types of water look different. Sometimes you want to fill in the area overall by smudging it in in a fuzzy look. This allows you to fill in the gaps for how it was a bit see-through. Now I'm going back in using a mix of the turquoise and the aqua green to get ripples and highlights in the surface of the water. This water looks more tropical because of the greenishness. Sometimes when you use only the blues, it'll actually look a little more temperate. This is me using up the extra turquoise and green paint on another spare pie plate. Once the acrylic's dry, it's gone. I can't use it for anything anymore. So I'm intentionally smearing it in this one so I could cut it out and turn it into a pond by putting a second coat later. Remember, you can move things out of your way as soon as they're no longer in use. Don't leave empty containers and pallets in the way. As you continue working, make sure to double check what you're doing, where the paint is on the brush, and look at what you're working on to make sure you're satisfied with the results. If you're not satisfied, keep painting until you are. Acrylic works in layers. Mistakes made can be corrected. You can also wipe off mistakes using a paper towel while the paint is still wet. You can remove some of the excess paint from the brush with something like a paper towel. I did this to remove more of the greenish color from my brush before moving forward to work on more of the bluish or northern implied water puddles and ponds. Double checking where on the brush the paint is before continuing to work is a good tip when working with a large brush like this. As the materials aren't particularly expensive for the amounts you'll be using and the setup costs, you can feel less fear in trying different things out. If you make mistakes, you can correct them, as I said, by layering and trying. If you don't prefer a large brush like this, use a different brush. Use whichever brush you prefer. It also might be that you can't find this type of large makeup brush at your local dollar store or anywhere else that sells such things. In such a case, use another brush you enjoy. Practice using the brush. Work on different ways you can tap and twist and smudge and move the brush around. You can practice on paper plates directly, foam plates like these, in sketchbooks and other surfaces. I do advise going right in on the foam plates due to the fact that they aren't expensive and you can layer on to correct mistakes if you need to. If you do make a mistake on the foam plates, you're still getting practice in with how paint works on this particular surface as you move forward working on the scatter terrain. It paints a little differently than on paper, so that's something to keep in mind. I also recommend preparing cardboard boxes, plastic trays, or something else to put the pieces in while they're drying. Carefully carry them to a place to dry. I put them in a separate room for drying 
If you have this space, I advise you put them in a room you're not actively in, because even acrylic paints give off a certain amount of fumes when they're drying, so it's even safer to not have them in the room you're in while they're drying. Also, to keep them out of the way, somewhere where they're less likely to get dust or loose hairs, or be in the way of you while you're eating or doing something else. Having a separate location planned out before you start this project for you to put them while they're drying is a good idea. I just finished off the last bit of this one before setting them aside to fully dry overnight again. Once it's fully dry, I'm using Gloss Gel Medium. This one is by Ryotech, but you can get any company. It works exceptionally well for this purpose. I'm using a palette knife to get it out of here, but it depends on what kind of container you have. I'm getting a lot out because I'm doing several pieces, but you don't need too much. You can always get out more if you need more. I chose to wet the brush because I didn't need the brush to be too wet for this. You're able to use the kabuki brush for this, but partway through you'll see I'll switch to another brush as well. In this case, you want to cover the entire surface with a clear gel gloss medium more evenly, but you're also going to be going in and intentionally creating different wave-like patterns and designs, which will stay in three-dimensional space using the gel gloss medium. This creates a realistic water-like effect over the surface of what you've already prepped and painted. I'm using another dollar store brush here a large filbert style makeup brush. Makeup brushes are extremely excellent for using with crafting and painting. I more recently discovered that. I super enjoy them with many different paints and special effects, including acrylic paint, but also I've been enjoying them with watercolors. You should get some makeup brushes from the dollar store and try them out. They might become your new favorite brushes. When it came to doing these water spots here, I seem to prefer the filbert style makeup brush to the large kabuki brush. Sometimes you can try different things out and see what you like. I tried to do different wave-like effects so none of them looked identical. I used the kabuki large makeup brush to get large areas more covered and very tiny wave effects. I filled in any of the gaps by looking at where the shine was with the filbert style makeup brush and went back in to get larger wave areas. I also was able to get a smooth flat area and tap using the side of the bristles to get a very realistic broken wave texture. This gel gloss medium is going to dry crystal clear. It's not going to have any of that whitish misty effect to it. I'm going to try out other acrylic mediums with other effects for scatter train. This is intended to be the first video in a series. Let me know in the comment section below what other scatter terrain you're interested in seeing in this series. I was also thinking about as if there was a wind. I was also trying to match some of these wave peaks with what I had painted below. As you can see, I'm trying to get the ripples in the water to match up. It looks like a wind is blowing across that pond. Here I put down a smooth, fairly flat layer before adding in ripple effects. I'm once again trying to get a wind direction planned out on this, as if wind is blowing from one direction across the pond to the other. I also previously gathered and looked at reference of other models done of water, as well as photographs of actual water. Looking at the real thing helped me figure out how I was going to paint it. I also advise just jumping in and trying things out. If you're having a lot of trouble, I advise you go look for, gather, and use references. References are your own personal helping hand because the human mind simply cannot remember everything. So it's okay to go look at something to help you figure out what you're trying to depict. I didn't need anywhere near as much for these little pieces. A quick tap, a quick little wave, a quick cover. It was very, very fast. After I finish all the last little ones, I make sure to double check that I like everything and I place it all very carefully so there's no overlap or touching on the tray so it's ready to dry. Once you're happy with everything you've gotten done, make sure to carefully walk to where your drying room is. Because the foam plate pieces are very light, it's easy for them to fly up and out of the tray or for you to drop them and for them to blow around in any kind of breeze. They are lightweight, which is a slight disadvantage. 
They also remain ever so slightly tacky to the surface and slightly sticky together, which is a bit of an issue, but I really enjoy them. Here's an example of placing them out real time. I haven't sped up or slowed down this footage. It shows how quick it is to actually put out this terrain to use on your game grid. Use it with some other pieces of terrain that you've either prepared yourself, like these trees I prepared, and bushes, as well as, obviously, with different scale miniatures. I advise using real rocks, they are very handy. I keep them on hand with my other miniature terrain pieces, as they can work just fine and are, of course, the most realistic possible. Here's a broken pillar. I think it's very fun to set up this quick scene for an encounter. If you're a dungeon master or game master of some sort, you can quickly set up any random encounter using these type of scattered terrain pieces. They'll add a lot of wonderful realism and beauty to whatever scene you're trying to put out. And as you saw, they don't take a lot of time to put out and use. They're fairly easy to just keep on hand and have an enjoyable time playing your game. They can up the quality of what you're working on and make your players very impressed. Pulling out these lovely water scatter pieces can actually make your players even happier in the game. And they're fun to make and interesting to have as a part of your collection. I hope you enjoyed this video and look forward to more in this series. Once again, that's all for this video. If you like my videos, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell to all notifications so you will know when a new video comes up. I aim for new videos every Wednesday, but sometimes life happens and things are delayed. I hope that you enjoyed this video and we'll see you with another one very soon.